This is Boston, has been ranked first amongst the, the, the smart cities all over the North America. Why? We can imagine it, because it hosts one, uh, some of the most important universities all over the world. We can talk, uh, think about Harvard or the MIT. So let's go on, let's go more in depth with what is a smart city? Actually, we don't, look, we don't see that really good, in a good way. Well, anyway, we can see these features. Yeah, thanks. Uh, these features are uh, the main things that characterize a smart city. Well, governance, economy, mobility, environment, people, and living. We can think about, that, uh, about them by giving some examples. About governance, we will talk about Seattle and the seattle.gov uh, approach, which means that they give you a 24-7 online city hall. You can relate with the, the local authorities in a way that we, we cannot think about it in Italy. It's just uh, giving uh, questions and they will answer you about anything, anything. Uh, this means also transparency of data. These are really important things. Economy, of course, we all think about a strong economy, which is in Germany. As in Berlin, there are low rental prices, low housing costs. You can, if you're an entrepreneur, you can go to a bank, ask for loans, and they will give you. If you've got good ideas, well, it's a thing that we cannot think about it in Italy. And mobility. That's one of the things that we are much in contact, you know, because we are taking the metro line, undergrounds, and also riding the bike. Riding a bike here in Italy, it's almost impossible in some, some cities like in Milan, of course, if you have experimented that. <laughs> and in um, Copenhagen has been ranked first in this field because there are more than 50 kilometers of uh, cycling tracks and oh, MIT is working on uh, creating a sort of a wheel which, is, which can turn your normal bike into an electric one. So these all are smart services. And environment, why Vancouver has been ranked first in this field because it used uh, all, almost all the buildings in Vancouver uses renewable sources and they, are, they use solar plants to get to work. People, people, of course, Boston, as we have said. So smart people create a smart city. We cannot have a smart city unless we have smart people. That's important. We have to, we have to think about, all of us should think about how to improve your city how to improve the living there, and living. Of course, Vienna is, has been ranked first on this field because it's culturally vibrant. You can, uh, you can always have uh, many events on it, and uh, health, safety. Being, living there, it's safe. It's another important thing. All of them are represented in this framework that has been established by Cohen, the climatologist, the famous climatologist. But the key word of all of them is sustainability. We cannot create this services unless they are unsustainable. That's a, uh, an important thing to, keep it to take, bear it in mind. But since I'm an engineer, I'm addicted to formulas, so I'll give you <laughs> one of them. This here, smart service is given by a, the product of benefits times number, number of users. This leads us to the concept of network externalities. And this is related to the fact that I'm a blogger, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you the fact that this is important also to, to influence our bloggers because they can inspire and lead the change to, towards this concept of smart cities. Why should we invest in a smart city? The, here, this salon is about core entrepreneurship. So am I to, I'm talking with entrepreneurs who are willing to invest in smart cities because of three factors. Urbanization. By 2030, 60% of people will live in urban areas. So a broader, a greater audience for you, for your uh, startup business. 37 mega cities with plus than 10 million person, uh, people. And 80% of world's energy consumption is given by uh, urban areas. And 60% of those greenhouse emissions are given by urban areas. I'm gonna give you just a model, I don't wanna enter in it on, on the, on the formulas on it, but I'm gonna give you just this model of Rolf's model uh, based in 1974 that talks about the benefits that someone has when enters into network. So if we establish a network um, that uh, helps people communicating, so a sort of a smart service, we, we can relate it of the number of users because the benefits, B, is equal to the number of actual users already there 
times one minus theta, where is the willingness to enter, my willingness to enter, minus the price that the, the provider set for my entrance. So we can relate that is directly proportional to the number of already present users. It's an example, it's Facebook. Why we are on Facebook? Because our friends are on Facebook. So if we create as much service, we must get a number of users to let the people come in. And at the first time, we will uh, take a price that is to zero, because, because the critical mass of people that let entering into that network will go to zero too. So the higher is the price, the higher is the critical mass. So what do you have to do when you are an entrepreneur? You have to launch the network for free as WhatsApp. Thinking about WhatsApp, was it free at the beginning? Yeah, it was free. Why? Because all the people enter on it and they were addicted to it. Now they put it a fixed fee on it. So we are uh, willing to pay because we are on it. We are, everybody's on it. So it's just, uh, this is a typical example of what should you do when you're, you're creating a business uh, on a smart city. And uh, of course, there's a minimal amount of users to convince in order to have a successful service. But what's the problem? The problem is that entrepreneurs are not really into this mentality. Because what's the connection between entrepreneurs and bloggers? The online service, from a statistics given by technoradio.com, we see that the online service is most likely to influence our purchase. Of course, 50% majority of them are retailer retail sites, because you go there and you see all the products and buy them. But actually, broad, uh, blogs comes before Facebook. Didn't you expect that? No, I don't think so. Because that's what the entrepreneurs usually do. They give, oh, this is a digital budget breakdown of all the efforts, expenditures that um, uh, entrepreneurs usually pay. And they pay just 10% of it is related to the social advertisement. And of this 10%, 57% is given to Facebook, and just 6% is given to blogs. While we see from this stat that blogs are considered more important by the people when they actually think about a uh, purchase something. This is Milan, by the way. And um, you know, the problem is that they don't conf they are not confident in bloggers. They don't think bloggers can lead us to a change and um, help them becoming uh, more profitable, their service becoming more profitable. And of course, um, let's talk about uh, how are they composed, the bloggers, in this kind of, uh, of field. They are more hobbyists. 61% of them is a hobbyist. So it means that it, he, he doesn't earn profits from doing this. So what, is me, what does it mean? It means for an entrepreneur that if you convince them to rate uh, in a positive way your service, you're going to get a higher benefit because you don't pay him uh, anyway. In, in any case, you don't pay anything to him. So if they give you higher rates, uh, feedbacks, uh, they will spread the things amongst the web with their social networks and so on. And their advantages are that they've got a bottom-up approach. So they are from the basis. They, are not, they haven't got any um, authority about them. So they can look um, at the minimum things that somebody, uh, also the authorities in smart cities, cannot think about it. And they are from every social status. Of course, it's uh, equal to the web. Uh, the deep use of social networks, they are into social networks. They are, have all the social networks, like me, of course. And they are everyday monitoring. This is important. Because sometimes you create a service, a, smart, a city, does create a service, but they leave it alone, and the people are not uh, just using it and thinking about how to improve it, while bloggers are always monitoring them. I'm always talking about microblogging as well. I mean, Twitter is a sort of microblogging um, way of uh, explaining all these things. And they are, of course, no economic profit driven. That is uh, one of the most important things, I guess. Let's see just some data. We can see that WordPress has got more than 65 million blogs. Tumblr, 108.3 million blogs. Uh, have you already heard that Tumblr has been acquired by Yahoo? You can see by these things how important are the blogs for all these companies above. 
So all the companies working on these fields. And why Kaizen? Why I titled the, the um, actually my subtitle was a Kaizen approach from a blogger's perspective. Why bloggers? It's me. But why Kaizen? Because we are already, we are always um, uh, striving ourselves to, to look for uh, improvements. We should never be satisfied. A city can always become smarter. This is an important thing. You can be satisfied by the services that a city gives you, especially here in Italy. But also, continuous improvement. Continuous improvement it's, um, must be our uh, guide. And we have got no constraints. We have got no constraints means that we can look beyond. We can look beyond. So, um, and here's a way to, to, to conclude this sort of uh, speech is saying that uh, entrepreneurs are linked with bloggers, should be linked with bloggers, more than uh, how they behave now, by now. And actually, they uh, must think about uh, the benefits of all society, because if they think about the benefits of all society, they will give a higher reputation. This higher reputation means of course, especially now that everybody is going to, uh, to, to, to give feedbacks on Twitter, on Facebook, on blogs. Uh, this means reputation. Reputation it's means profits. Because there are a lot, a lot of firms which are doing your same things. So you have to differentiate, so that's why you should invest in smart cities, as we've seen. And you should deal with these guys that are bloggers. So. Uh, the concept is be smart, invest in a smart city, and that's all. Thanks. Thank you very much.